going to interact with all of you on setting question paper and you will agree with me that setting question paper is integral to teaching learning because evaluation forms an integral part of teaching learning unless and until we evaluate our students we cannot be sure whether the intended learning objectives have been achieved attained and thus evaluation provides us the feedback to improve upon our instruction or in other words the teaching learning now when i say setting question paper all of you are involved in this activity when you set class tests or you act as a paper setter for the end term examination of punjab technical university any good evaluation would have certain characteristics so i am going to first deal with what are the characteristics or requirements of good evaluation may i know from the audience when we say evaluation is good what do we mean by that yes the criteria of setting was right criteria was right criteria what do, uh, can you please elaborate your paper setting as well as your marking okay your... one is the marking and one you say setting question paper now when you say setting question paper what all things you are going to look into the question paper then the question which i am asking uh, the applicability do my question right yes please go on the size alphabet size of the font size okay font size what else Basing. Basing. Okay. Sequencing. And G. Sequencing. Sequencing. Okay. What else? Page margin. <laughs> okay. Margin. Okay. ये तो this is all when you type or you get it printed. But when we say question paper, it consists of questions. do we look into the kind of questions which have been set are we concerned with the quality of questions too yes yes, yes okay so what what exactly you see into the question when do you say the questions are good or question is not good or questions have been framed appropriately or not yes the question cut down cut half the full content of the chapter full contents content okay full content so coverage of the contents okay what else ma'am i think you are right when you have given me few points with respect to the quality of question paper the very first requirement of any good evaluation is validity you must have heard this term validity so can you please let me know when i say validity how would you like to interpret this term validity have you come across this term validity is the question as per the syllabus and uh, okay uh, okay uh, so as per so here you can see when we refer to validity it means whether the test measures what it intends to measure ab uh, i take an example of a foot ruler foot ruler is used to measure 12 inches 
if the foot ruler which is given to you it measures 12 inches then we say it is a valid measure of the uh, foot right but if it measures 11 inches then we say it is not a valid measure to measure the foot so when we set test paper it should serve the purpose for which it has been designed so the very first characteristic is coverage of content as one of our colleagues said that the questions which are covered in the question paper they should cover the whole syllabus for that subject if there are 10 topics 10 topics need to be covered in the question paper if there are 8 8 topics need to be covered in the question paper the second requirement of good evaluation is that it should test all levels of cognitive ability now by this time you must be clear about various cognitive abilities and as i discussed mr pk singla also discussed these issues so we have remembering objectives at the remembering level then at the understanding level then applying level then analyzing level evaluating and creating now when we say the present examination system it is being criticized that it only tests the lower level abilities that is remembering and understanding but when it comes to applying and higher than application that is analyzing evaluating and creating 20 to 25 percent weightage is given in the examination paper but in reality when we say a good evaluation it should have questions which test the lower level objectives remembering understanding but they also test the ability to apply ability to analyze ability to evaluate and ability to create so a good evaluation would give range of questions which measure ability at varied levels in the cognitive to me then the question paper should convey the intentions of the paper setter now if i say what is semiconductor now as a paper setter i may be expecting that a person gives the meaning of semiconductor another person may say that when it is what is semiconductor the student must be able to give situations where semiconductors are applied so there are different connotations with the people who read that question but a good question is one which have has one meaning for all the people whether they are students teacher examiner or the paper setter additional quality of good evaluation is that items should be of varied kinds now when i say items should be of varied kinds then we all know that we can have supply type questions or we can have selection type questions when i say supply type question that means a student is required to supply the answer to the given question when i say selection type items it means the student has to select the right answer from the given alternatives or you can see here when we say supply type it includes essay type questions it includes short answer type questions and fill in the blank when we say selection type test items they may include true false kind of item then matching type items and multiple choice test items so a good evaluation would have a question paper where different types of items are used to test different levels of ability next we see that whatever items we prepare for the question paper or the questions we set they must cater to the individual differences among the students we all know 
that our students some are highly intelligent or some are high achievers some are average achievers others are below average achievers or in terms of intelligence some are highly intelligent other are in uh, average of average intelligence and others are below average now in that case the items which we include in the question paper some of these items should be easy so that a student who is below average is able to answer those items some of moderate difficulty so that an average student is able to answer those items and then some items which are of high difficulty and only the students who are highly intelligent they are able to answer those items and thereby we cater to the individual differences that exist within a class then a good evaluation tries to generate maximum individual differences maximum individual differences are generated when the difficulty level of question is 0.5 that means when 50% of the students are able to solve the problem or answer the question and 50% are unable to answer the question that is the question which normally generates maximum individual differences and when we try to standardize this we try to retain items which have the difficulty value between 0.4 to 0.6 that means either 40% of the students should be able to solve the item or maximum 60% of the students should be able to solve the item or the question so a good evaluation would lead to generation of maximum individual differences another is if the purpose of evaluation is to discriminate between the high and low achievers then we should have items which only the high achievers can solve that means there should be distinction between the high and low achievers high achievers should be able to solve maximum items but low achievers should not be able to achieve those uh, or solve those problems another characteristic of good evaluation is reliability may i know from the audience what do we mean by reliability yes how do you interpret this term reliability yes normally in day to day life also we say this person is very reliable what do we mean by that trustworthy very nice when you say ma'am absolutely right when you say trustworthy it means the evaluation should also be trustworthy but when i say the evaluation should be trustworthy i mean to say that it should provide consistent results it those results should be dependable and here you will see that we have a system of reevaluation in the universities and many a times the discrepancy between the first evaluation and the second evaluation is so large that we cannot depend either on the first evaluation or the second evaluation and thereby the university has to have the third examiner to evaluate the answer sheets so when i say this refers actually to inter rater reliability that means if evaluation is carried out by more than one person there should be high correlation between the two evaluations that means a student who is getting 60% marks in the first evaluation the marks should not vary significantly from first evaluation to second evaluation there can be marginal difference say of 2 to 3 marks but it cannot be that a student who gets 60 marks in the first evaluation 
gets 80 marks in the second evaluation. The relative position of the student should not change. That means a student who has got, say, the lowest fifth position in the class should not be able to attain the first position in the class in the second evaluation. The scores on two evaluation should have high positive correlation. Then intra reader reliability. Now, if the same examiner checks the answer sheets twice, again, the correlation between the first and the second evaluation should be very high. That refers to intra reader reliability. Then the another characteristic is the whatever scores the person attains in the examination they should be true indicators of his achievement at present when we are getting students from 10 plus 2 they come with 70 75 percent marks and many a times we make this statement they have got so many so high scores but as far as their fundamental knowledge is concerned they lack that that means the knowledge is not as per the scores which they have attained in the examination. So when I say 90% of the marks, that means a student has the knowledge of 90% of the content of that particular subject. But this does not happen in reality. I'll come to the drawbacks in the existing system. Then we'll see how to design a good question paper. In addition to that, one of the important parameters is there should be complete objectivity in scoring. At present, when we say selection type items, whether it is a true false item, matching type item, or a multiple choice item, the objectivity of scoring is too high. For a right answer, if I check it, I am going to give one mark. If a machine checks it, it will also give one mark or any other examiner, examiner, if he or she checks that, he or she will also give one mark. But this is not true in case of supply type question items. In case of supply type items, there is leverage given to the examiner. If it is not properly drafted or properly written question, then a lot of uh, flexibility is there with the examiner to give marks. So subjectivity creeps in into the supply type question paper. So higher the objectivity, we can say the evaluation will be good or better. Now we come to, if you can have a look at, uh, I think I'll go to the previous one. Uh, let me just, uh, here you can see, now we move on to what are some of the drawbacks that exist in the existing evaluation system. Our present evaluation system lays greater emphasis on written test, but written test is only one form of evaluation. In addition to written test, you have performance test, you have viva voce, that is oral examination, then you have self-report inventories, then you have sociometric techniques. But in our case, we are trying to evaluate our students through written examination. And written examination give leverage to the students who are very fluent in writing. And what about those who are very good at performing a task? What about those who are very good in speaking rather than writing? And as far as the quality of question papers is concerned, we find that there is inadequate coverage of the content matter. Why? Because there are external choices given to the students. Out of the eight or the nine question enlisted in the paper setter, a student has to attempt only five questions. Then stress on testing lower level abilities. We have carried out four studies here in the institute and we found that 80 to 85% of the marks are given to testing 
ability to remember ability to understand and ability to apply and higher than application ability only 15 to 20% weightages given so at present we are not able to assess or evaluate the higher level abilities of our students then asking trivial things this is also true i'll give you some of your question papers and then i'll prove when i say trivial things many of the questions which are asked they are asking about meaning or they are asking about the definition or they are asking the student to state a principle so these are or you are getting more of the knowledge domain tested or the remembering level tested in the question paper in correct framing of question i give you an one example what is semiconductor now different students can interpret it in different manner so different answers will flow so how are you going to compare one answer with the other so subjectivity in scoring creeps in so incorrect framing of questions also is what we observe in our question paper repetition of questions it is not that the question is repeated in the subsequent examination paper in the same paper also sometimes it happens that the same question appears at two different places now i can give you one example where the same question was first added as a two mark question then it was added as a short answer question only the nomenclature was changed so repetition of question either over the years or within the same question paper this is also existing within uh, in the present system then grammatical mistakes in the questions are there proper verb is not used irrelevant questions sometimes when students walk out from the examination hall because they say the question is out of syllabus so sometimes these kinds of things we observe then it also happens that the question paper is too lengthy i give you one example of hrd paper that is human resource development paper which came in the last uh, examination in pu punjab university and the examiner the paper setter what she uh, he or she has done is all the questions they started with discuss and the title of the topic was written discuss hrd strategies discuss the importance of hrd discuss every discuss systematic design to training program all questions and the title of the topic was enlisted for any student it is very difficult to cover the whole content of the syllabus in 3 hours then we, uh, scores are not true indicator this i have already discussed mass copying we come across cases we are at centers there is instant there are instances of mass copying then leakage of question paper is another phenomena which is prevalent and then subjectivity in scoring because when you frame a question you are not giving how many marks are to be given uh, to each part or the various parts which are to be covered lack, lack of transparency this i don't go because this pertains to internal assessment now we see what are some of the steps in setting question papers so all of you are acting as paper setters may i know from the audience how do you go about setting a question paper yes i would like two to three teachers to share How do you ensure that? 
how do you ensure that every student is able to get 50% of the marks? It will depend on the uh, difficulty level of the question itself. Okay. So if I say my students are weak, that, that means all 50% of the question should be within the reach. Yes, ma'am. I think so. Okay. What else? What else? Uh, ma'am, it should also contain uh, the higher level questions. Okay. How much time do you take to set this kind of a question paper? Approximately, I think that it's 15 minutes. Okay. 15 to 14 minutes to set. Any other member who would like to thank you, ma'am? Any other member who would like to thank you? Okay. Veteran of examination. I'm asking, you are setting question paper. How do you go about setting a question paper? Narrow based question. Okay. Just write questions, that's it. It should be almost a format to style. Okay. Format to style. Format to style. Okay, what is the format at present? So the same pattern is followed when you are sitting class test. Are you following the same pattern when you set the class test? Okay, okay. Now I'll come to that also. The very first step in setting a question paper is list all the topics which are there in the syllabus, right? If it is going to be a class test, maybe the very first class test you are able to cover three topics and you are going to include those three topics. If you are doing it a class test two, maybe the six topics you are you have covered so six topics should be there and if it is end term examination the whole syllabus becomes part of your topics right the second step is specify learning outcomes now in many of the syllabus which are or syllabi which are available for various subjects the course objectives are given in the beginning of the syllabus and if you kindly have a look at those, they can serve the purpose for drafting the question paper, questions or items. Because there ought to be correspondence between the outcomes and the questions which we set in the examination paper. So a teacher needs to write down what are the learning outcomes for the various topics which are enlisted which I am going to cover in the question paper. So write those learning outcomes. Then you need to determine the weightages to be given to each topic. So how do we determine? I'll just go to the next uh, slide where you can have how do we go about determining the weightages to be given to various topics. topics, stress and strain, members of subjected to fluxural loads, principal planes, stresses and strains. So say these three topics have been covered. I could see some of your syllabi on the website of PTU and I found in certain cases the hours, instructional hours to be spent on each topic they have been given in the syllabus. So what you need to do is just write how much time you spend on teaching that particular topic. Say for example, you have said 20 hours teaching has been done. Or, so your stress and strain, you spent almost 8 hours. 
members subjected six hours then the third topic principal planes another six hours so 20 hours need to be split into how much time did you spend on the first second and third so total instructional time is 20 hours and you know how much time did you give to each topic then you need to work out the weightage that is time instructional time divided by the total instructional time into the marks for which you are going to set the paper now here if your time was 8 hours 8 divided by 20 into if you are going to set a 60 marks question paper then 8 divided by 20 into 60 so that means out of the 60 marks 24 marks should be given to the first topic that is stress and strain the second topic was we had given 6 hours for teaching so 6 divided by 20 into 60 again it will be 18 marks which need to be given to the topic number 2 and likewise I said we spent 6 hours in teaching the topic number 3 so 6 divided by 20 into 60 again 18 hours so 18 hours 18 hours for the second topic and 24 hours for the first topic so you know out of the 60 marks this should be the weightage given to each one of the three topics and this weightage can be modified by the teacher depending upon the importance this particular topic has in the world of work that means how much of this knowledge can be applied in the field how much is the importance of this topic when the student goes to the world of work so if you feel that this topic is more important that is third topic is more important than the first one maybe two to three percentage of marks can be increased here that means out of the 24 which you had given to the first topic and 18 which you have given to the second topic you can increase the weightage so maybe you would like 20 percent weightage to be given to the third topic 20 percent weightage be given to the second topic and 22 marks may be uh, sorry 20 marks may be given to the first topic so this two to three uh, percent mark variation can be there on the basis of the importance of each topic in the world of work so here you will see when I talk in terms of determine weightages to be given to each topic so you need to know the instructional time you need to know the total instructional time and the marks to be allocated in the paper then comes preparation of table of specification table of specification when I say table of specification is two-way representation two-way representation of what the topics and the levels cognitive levels of the objectives that means how much weightage is to be given to remembering how much weightage is to be given to understanding how much weightage is to be given to application and higher than application now say for example we said initially 24 marks are to be allocated to stress and strain out of those 24 marks depending upon the nature of the content and the nature of the learning outcomes you will try to determine out of the 24 marks am I going to give six marks at remember, remembering six marks at understanding and if there is anything application so maybe six 12 marks are given to application or if you find that the very first topic doesn't have application and we have 20 marks given to it then maybe the allocation is remembering 10 understanding 10 depending upon the nature of content and nature of objectives 
but when it comes to the second topic where it has application or the third topic where we are dealing with application then maybe the 18 marks which we had tried to calculate the split of the 18 mark is i only gave four marks for remembering maybe another four marks for understanding and so eight and the 10 marks goes to application or maybe if we have higher than application then the split may be five plus five so as a teacher it is not simple that we determine the total marks to be allocated to the topic but we also try to determine at what level the evaluation needs to be carried out depending upon the nature of the content and the nature of learning outcomes. So after we prepare a table of specification, what we need to do is we need to determine the level of ability that we have done. So allocate marks to each ability level. So for the three topics, if you add the marks to be given to remembering level, this will give you the total weightage in the question paper to be given to the remembering level, then to the understanding, then to the appli application, then to the higher than application. Then the task of the teacher is to draft items or write questions. So I'll come to that. How do we go about that? And then comes to editing of items. Maybe you do the editing first or you can take the help of one of your colleagues to edit the items to improve upon the quality of questions or quality of items. Or in some of the institutions, a moderation committee is also constituted. They also look into the question paper set by the person and then, then they try to see the quality of question papers set. Now we come on to then the last thing would be assemble the test. After you have written the items, you assemble the test. So let's see when we are setting the question paper, we need to decide about the how many of these will be supply type. But I find in your case, it is all 100% items, supply type test items are there. There are no selection type items as far as the pattern is concerned. Now let me deal in detail the question paper and then I'll take up few question paper from PTU. Any question paper has four important parts. One is the general information. Second are the instructions. Third is the nature of questions or nature of items. And the fourth one is the weightages which are given to various parts of the question. So let's see first the general information. What do we mean by general information? Simple general information means at the top of the question paper, we must have information with respect to of which discipline, of which branch the question is. Which semester, first semester, second semester or first year or second year it must reflect the subject for which the questions have, paper has been set and subject code because each university gives subject code so that should be clearly specified on the top, top of the question paper then how much time is allowed is it two hours three hours or one and a half hours depending upon the nature of question papers and the last thing which it should give is the maximum marks which are allocated to. So if it is 60 marks, it should be clearly indicate, indicated maximum marks. Or if it is, uh, say, 45 marks or 40 marks, that should be indicated on top of. Uh, so in ca some cases, a part of this information is missing. Part, why I say either the subject name is missing or subject code is missing. If subject code is given, subject is not written. If subject is written, subject code is not written. But it should give both. Both. So that should be seen that it should include all the six elements in the general information. 
Then comes instructions. Instructions ought to be complete. When I say instructions ought to be complete, first opening line has to be how many questions are to be attempted from the given. But if the question paper has been divided into sections, it must say that there are three sections of the question paper, that is part A, part B and part C. Right? So that must be the opening instruction. And then how many questions are to be attempted from each part that should be clearly written. And whether all questions carry equal marks or are they of different marks that should be indicated to the students. Right? Then they should be concise because there is hardly any time with the student to go through the lengthy instruction. So point wise if you have given and brief to the point then it is okay. Clear clarity of instruction is what is required. We need not include any background information in the instructions. Then comes they should be simple. Simple in language, simple more simplified instructions are, more clarity would be there with the student. Then if you have different instructions for different sections, then it is always desirable that those instructions be placed at the appropriate place. When section A starts, instructions are given. When section B starts, sec uh, instructions, if specific to that section, they should be given. Then comes their grammatical correctness. And let's now see if this is what needs to be done. Now I am uh, comes that we need to write the questions. Now here are few examples of the questions at various cognitive levels. Now you can see here that we said you need to have some questions at the remembering level. So I am giving you a few examples. When we say define zone of action and zone of silence, this is a question at the remembering level. It requires only rote memorization on the part of the student. Define chalked flow. Definition, again rote memorization. Define strength of shock wave. Likewise, define by propellant and list various types of seats. Now, when you simply ask the student to enlist the name of various types of seats, it's again the rote memorization. Or you ask the person to name various painting processes. Uh, it is S, not uh, processor, but processes. Enumerate any two qualities of good timber. Again, when you say enumerate, it is only remembering the name of those two qualities. Then define the following terms is the same. When you say state cement ratio law, because laws are stated. So if you ask the student to state a principle, again, you are testing remembering level of the Learn, state Charles now, or list four operations commonly performed by microprocessors. These are all examples whereby you are only assessing ability to memorize or you are testing the rote memorization on the part of your students. Then comes the level of understanding. The question when starts with derive the relationship between static temperature and stagnation temperature. Derivation of any relationship. Derive the relationship between stress and strain. Derive the relationship between voltage and current. All these questions are come under the category of understanding. Or you say heat addition to a gas may cool the gas explain with proper HS diagram. Again, this is where some understanding, it is higher than the level of rote memorization. 
the student needs to understand explain the difference between normal and oblique shocks again this question test understanding level explain the ram effect even this is understanding or if you ask the student to apply a given formula in a given situation known situation it is also understanding say you have told me how to calculate the area of a room so area is equal to length into breadth now i change the value of length and breadth and i ask the student to calculate the area it is not ability to apply it is only question at the understanding level once the person understands the formula to calculate the area he is simply changing the value to find the solution to the problem or when we have a question like differentiate between shaft and jet propulsion again this is when you ask a person to compare or differentiate or distinguish all these questions are at the understanding level or you ask the person to explain the classification of the rockets again is understanding here you can see compare the flows through a constant area duct for isentropic and adiabatic condition again this is understanding with the help of a neat sketch explain liquid propelled rocket engine again this is a question at the understanding level now let's see explain construction working characteristics of zener diode again is understanding color code write the steps for recovering a file from recycled bin again this is because these are standard steps he is not going to solve any problem but he is remembering the steps and he is writing the steps then comes applying what kind of questions are, can be there at the applying level now here you can see air enters an isentropic diffuser with a mass number of this and is decelerated to a mass number of 2 so you are giving a situation which is novel for the student he has not been given this situation in the classroom so he is trying to apply the learned knowledge of concepts and principles to find a solution to this problem this is what is referred to as ability to apply then comes similarly you have another numerical which would require a student to apply the learned knowledge then comes problem solve that means analyzing evaluating and creating so here the problem requires a person to apply more than two rules more than one rule rather to solve the problem so if a person is required to apply more than one rule to find solution then we say the person has the problem solving ability so all those uh, questions which would require the person to apply more than one rule they are referred to as problem solving now here let me also give you some examples at the evaluating wherever there are more than one technique to do the thing there are more than one method to do the thing there are more than one material which can be used so there when you ask a person to select a particular technique particular process particular material this involves ability to evaluate so here you can see select an appropriate engine for a sports utility vehicle of a given specification and justify the selection so when a person is able to select engine for a given automobile and the person is able to give reasons why that uh, particular engine has been selected that means he has acquired the ability to evaluate likewise you can see here select the type of reinforced concrete you will prefer to design a bridge of a given specifications and explain the reasons for its selection so you can make a decision you can justify your decision or you can give reasons for your decision
Likewise, here you can see select an appropriate transformer for a given building and justify your decision. Let's have a quick look at creating. Here you see write a program for issuing salary slips to the employees of an organization. So if this kind of task is required, this requires ability to synthesize or ability to create. Design a staircase for a five-story residential building. This is ability to create because a person requires knowledge of the underlying concepts, principles, problem solving, ability to analyze, ability to evaluate. Only then he is able to create a design. Then design a carburetor for an engine, design a car of a given specification. These are some examples of questions at various levels. Now friends, let's quickly see sample question papers. I will not show you the papers from others, but what I have said, let me discuss with you the degree level papers which I could lay hand upon yesterday on the website. Uh, somebody has uploaded few papers. So let me just go to that and uh, deal with some of these papers. Um, uh, mm -hmm. See, I am taking up this building material. Are you able to read what is written on the screen? Yes, the audience members? Yes, ma'am. OK. Uh, you were telling me this is the pattern which you adopt. Now here you see on the top of it, uh, roll number is written. Total number of pages, total number of questions, even that is given. BTEC semester third. Now here you see what is missing is the branch is missing. Is it BTEC civil engineering? That will, is appearing in the code, but on the top of the paper, the discipline of the branch is missing. Building material, subject is given, subject code is given, paper ID, which is not required for the student, that has also been given. That is actually not required, but yes, paper ID on OMR, if you use that, then only it is required. Then time, total time, which is given, is written. Maximum marks which are to be given is also indicated. Now instruction to candidates. Is it instruction or instructions? Yes. Instruction. Yes. It is more than one. So it has to be. So there is some grammatical mistake. Instruction to candidates or we could write instructions simply to candidates. We don't we can avoid writing this. Then it is written section A is compulsory. Attempt any four questions from section B. Attempt any two questions from section C. These are very clear, specific, and understandable. Then see here the very first question is of two marks. That means it is all short answer type questions which form part of section A. Now let, let's see what is written here. Classify the following stone and give their specific use in building construction. Is it classify the following stone or classify the following stones? Oh. Yes. Stones. Yes. You could identify. And what level of ability is being tested by this question? Remembering. And G? Remembering. No. Classify karna when you are able to give examples, it is understanding. You are not simply naming, but you have understood what are the properties and only then you can classify. So it is at the level of understanding and give their specific use. Is granite used only for one purpose? Yes. There can be many specific uses of granite. 
so when you say specific use one should write classify the following stones and give one specific use of uh, of these stones in building construction right so this uh, you can see is uh, item or question not properly framed and the second is how are bricks classified now what will be the answer if i pose this question how are bricks classified do we have civil engineer here and is anybody from civil engineering no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am no uh so why we are taking up this civil engineering paper which branch are available here which branches computer and management computer and management okay uh, let me let me computer science i don't oh uh, yeah fundamental of computers i have one question here question paper let's take that first uh fundamentals of computer programming and information technology so here you can say the paper uh, the general information varies paper id has been typed so boldly btech semester first and second then fundamentals of computer programming and information technology csc here you see let's take the very first question what are the advantages of assembly language over machine language question is of two marks how many advantages you want your student to write two four agar do chahte ho to ek ek number de sakte ho agar char chahte ho to half mark will be allocated to each advantage and when i say what are the advantages it appears to me this is an oral question hona kya chahiye tha it is a written examination so what should be the question here yes list or write so list any two or four advantages of assembly language over machine language and when you make it specific the examiner who is going to evaluate he will also know that the teacher or the paper setter has asked for two and two means one mark each will be allocated to the right answer or if the teacher has or the paper setter has asked four that means half mark is going to be allocated to each right answer see here the next question again which is wrong what is the difference between internal and external commands in dos that means there is only one difference there is only one difference yes yeah okay so if there is only one difference so i can make it more specific say write the difference between internal and external commands in dos go to the third one how a compiler is different from an interpreter again it is an oral question so you can change the uh, question kya likhenge how a compiler is different from an interpreter i can simply say differentiate between a compiler and an interpreter or i can change this question say write the difference between a compiler and an interpreter then you see again the question start with what is the utility of mail merge in ms word again the question needs to be for the written test what is the utility so one can write write the utility of mail merge in ms word then what is the difference between rom prom and eprom here the per, the person should have written differentiate among the three terms rom prom and eprom right then how windows operating system are different now here see here 
Windows operating system. Are there window many Windows operating system? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Nana, how Windows operating system are different from DOS? So question, क्या होना चाहिए था? Window, window. Okay, and the question should not start with how. How is again an oral question. So the question need to be modified. Explain how. अगर आप रखना चाह रहे हैं तो you could say explain as to how window operating system is different from DOS. Right? Then what is the function of layout tab in the page setup dialog box? State the function of layout tab in the page setup dialog box. Then see next one. What is the purpose? Again is wrong. Purpose of functions, prototype and scope. Write the purpose of functions, prototype and scope. Then next one is correct. Differentiate between pointers and references. Then last one which you see, what is meant by pass by value parameter. So here it could be simply explain the meaning of pass by value parameter or explain the concept of pass by value parameter. Now go to the section B. Each question is of 8 mark. Draw and explain the different components of block diagram of computer. Right? Now here, how many marks are to be given to the drawing? How many marks are to be given to the different components explanation? that has not been indicated. So it is left to the examiner whether he gives two marks for diagram and six marks for explanation or he tries to give four marks for the drawing and four marks for the explanation. So the paper setter needs to give the distribution of marks to be given to the sketch and the explanation. And explain in detail how you will deal with the lost clusters using this and this. Again, there are two parts. So, 4, comma, 4. If this has been the classification of marks, it will be easier for the examiner to do justice. Give at least 10 facilities provided by file managers in window. You want, what is 10 facilities. How many marks are there for the question? Eight marks. How are you going to distribute eight marks to the ten facilities? Why can't I restrict it to explain any four facilities provided by file manager in Windows? So I ask for four and I want explanation. I give two marks for each facility. And you are testing the ability to understand rather than ability to remember the name of the facility. So cognitive level varies and your marks would vary. Then here you will see how will you do following tasks in MS Word? Creating a paragraph. Why can't I simply write how will you write? Or explain the procedure for creating a paragraph and uh, explain the procedure for the following task in MS Word creating a paragraph, splitting one paragraph into two, joining paragraph, forcing a new line, modifying. Now, here again you see eight marks are there, six parts of the question are there. How many you want a person to attempt? All the six, how are you going to distribute marks? Again, is a big question mark. So if you have given eight marks, either you have eight things, but I would say give two marks each for writing steps because creating a paragraph, splitting one paragraph, which is one, one line. So try to increase the number of tasks. If they have more than one step, then you can retain 
or give two marks or one and a half marks depending upon the number of questions. Right? Then go to section C. Suppose A, B, C are integer variable where A is equal to 3 is this floating point variable where X is this determine the value of following expression. Now here again uh, you see 8 marks, 8 marks, 5 parts. Again, how, how the examiner is going to decide? So the paper setter needs to either 4 are given 2 marks each are to be allocated. Then C, write an interactive C++ program to accept a date and check for the validity of the date. Now this is when you say write an interactive program, you are actually testing the higher level abilities, ability to create, ability to create. Then again you see write a program in C++ to find the sum of the series up to nth terms. Right? Then write a C++ program to compare two files printing the first line where they differ. The program should take the names of files as command line arguments. So to compare two files, if you can give two files to the individual, then they can do justice. That will be higher level ability. Otherwise, if it is simple procedure to be recalled and written, then it is not higher level ability. So you can see for yourself there are errors, grammatical errors, there are errors in general information and then there is distribution of marks which also need to be looked into. Let me take you a quick look at another paper from civil, in, uh, we have people from management, okay. Uh, let's see, this is the paper Principles and Practices of Management, Subject Code, Paper ID. Now here you see on the top of the paper it is written MBA. So for which branch it is meant is also indicated but in other two cases it was not mentioned. And time allowed is 3 hours, maximum mark 60, instructions, section A is compulsory, attempt any four questions from section B. And here you see, here they go, fir voi baatage. The very first question, if you see 10 marks, 10 parts are to be attempted, each part is of 2 marks, that is okay, 10 into 2 is equal to 20. The very first question, what is the purpose of management? Is there only one function? Is there only one function of management? Hanji? Um, <laughs> Oh. Yeah, so what is it that I expect my student to write? So if I say, explain briefly the major five functions of management, or I ask, state, the, state any four major functions of uh, management, and I give half mark to each function, it, it justifies, right? What are operative functions of management? Now again it is oral question. Any question should not start with what? question. Written test. So one should write how many functions, operative functions of management are to be stated. Say any two or state any four operative functions of management. Then what are the steps in decision making? So ask the person and list the various steps in decision making and then say uh, if all the steps are written correctly two marks are to be given. Then define span of management this is correct definition you are asking for. Then what is line and staff concept? Is it line and staff concept or your organization? Is it the question correct? Is the question correct? Yes. What is line and staff concept? Management faculty, please. Organization. Organization. So I could say differentiate between line and staff organization. Staff. Okay. Then what is systems approach to management? 
अब देखो ये क्वेश्चन किसने लिखा होगा एंड टू मार्क्स क्वेश्चन कैन आई एक्सप्लेन सिस्टम अप्रोच टू मैनेजमेंट दो लाइनों में या एक लाइनों में कैन आई तो आई दिस क्वेश्चन इट सेल्फ इज रॉन्ग द क्वेश्चन शुड हैव इधर बिन अगर आप सिर्फ कॉन्सेप्ट क्लेरिफिकेशन चाहते हो कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अ सिस्टम डिफाइन एक्सप्लेन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ए सिस्टम वो तो समझ आता है बट दिस क्वेश्चन शुड हैव बिन पुट इन टू दस टाइप क्वेश्चन वेर यू कैन आस्क द पर्सन टू एक्सप्लेन द सिस्टम अप्रोच टू मैनेजमेंट देन आगे आइए वाई डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड आज अब दो नंबर है स्टेट एनी टू रीजन फॉर डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन specific clear question goes to the audience then see what is concurrent control ab main concurrent control ki definition cha rahi hu explanation cha rahi hu uska function cha rahi hu uska purpose cha rahi hu is not clear to the student mujhe purpose aata hai as a student main purpose likh deti hu kisi ko concept aata hai wo concept likh deta hai so what is it that is asked by the examiner तो अपने इंटेंशंस को हम कैसे क्लियर कर सकते हैं डिफाइन कंक्रीट कंक्रेंट कंट्रोल और एक्सप्लेन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ कंक्रेंट कंट्रोल और स्टेट द टू पर्पसेस सर्व्ड बाय कंक्रेंट कंट्रोल क्या चाहते हो दैट शुड बी कन्वे टू द स्टूडेंट देन कम व्हाट आर काइजन ये क्वेश्चन अब बताओ भाई मैनेजमेंट What are kaizens? <laughs> ये क्वेश्चन किसने पूछा होगा और किसने आंसर करा होगा हाँ जी टेक्निक फॉर क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट है ना सो होना क्या चाहिए था क्वेश्चन काइजेंस का कोई नहीं है ना आई डोंट There is anything called kaizens. So, what do you say? The C. Explain that here. Explain the technique of guys. Then quality management. Fine. Agge chalo. देखो फिर आगे तो अड़ा section B. Section B च लिखे हैं. Four uh, four parts are to be attempted. Ten marks each. Right? Explain the nature and scope of management. Now here the question consists of two parts nature and scope are the examiner going to give five marks each question arises so a student must know that i have to give equal weightage to nature equal weightage to scope while i write the answer otherwise what will happen somebody will give more focus to nature another person would give more weightage to a uh, scope so what is it that you expect your students to write that has to be indicated so it against this question if you had given 5 comma 5 means 5 marks for nature 5 marks for scope then discuss alton mayo's contribution to management thought acha hun tusi ek question dekho discuss to start ho rahe Can I do discussion on the in the written test? Discuss with whom? Discussion is always between two persons. So the question itself, and at the end of that, a question mark has been put, which is not required. Question mark is not necessary. It's a statement. Discuss Elton Mayo's contribution to management. So, who na question ki chahiye da siga? explain elton mayo's contribution to the match fun that's it good enough and then hun dekho a management thought that's very right then comes explain the process of strategic plan jado tusi process di gal kar rahe ho this question is correct explain bhi chal janda hai but one can use a better word describe the process of strategic management when you say describe that means all the steps needs to be given theek okay? hai then again the next is wrong 
discuss different bases of departmentation and explain their merits and demerits the question should have been explain different bases of departmentation and explain any two merits and demerits of different bases of departmentation ठीक है एंड देन द डिविजन ऑफ मार्क्स शुड हैव बीन गिवन पहले पार्ट में मैं किन्हें देने हैं बेसिस ऑफ डिपार्टमेंटेशन उन्हों अगर मैं एक्सप्लेन करना है हाउ मेनी मार्क्स आर टू बी गिवन एंड इफ आई हैव टू गिव टू मेरिट्स एंड टू डी मेरिट्स ऑफ ईच बेस देन हाउ मेनी मार्क्स आर लाइकली टू बी एलोकेटेड दैट इज अगेन मिसिंग इन दिस क्वेश्चन पेपर गो टू द नेक्स्ट वन एक्सप्लेन मॉडर्न टेक्निक्स ऑफ control how many techniques are to be all two one how many that has not been indicated so when you are throwing this question to the student i know one technique i'll write one technique another person knows two techniques he will write two techniques how examiner is going to compare my answer with the other student because we are following norm referenced evaluation so the answers vary so comparison cannot be made so again subjectivity in marking would be there then compare japanese and american practices of management practices of management management is such a wise vast area kis cheez ki practices ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਐਚ ਆਰ ਡੀ ਦੀਆਂ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟਿਸਸ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਓਵਰਆਲ ਮੈਨੇਜਮੈਂਟ ਦੀਆਂ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟਿਸਸ ਜਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਹੋਰ ਕੁਆਲਿਟੀ ਐਸ਼ੋਰ ਕਰਨ ਦੀਆਂ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟਿਸਸ ਕੀ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਐਟ ਅ ਮਤਲਬ ਇਟਸ ਅਗੇਨ ਅ ਅਥਾ ਸਾਗਰ ਐਂਡ ਐਨੀਬਡੀ ਕੈਨ ਰਾਈਟ ਐਨੀਥਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਥਿਸ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਅ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਸੋ ਥਿਸ ਕੈਨ ਬੀ ਮੇਡ ਮੋਰ ਸਪੈਸੀਫਿਕ ਬਾਈ ਸਪੈਸੀਫਾਈਂਗ ਵਾਟ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟਿਸਸ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਐਕਸਪੈਕਟਿੰਗ ਫਰਮ ਦ student it pitch and they do different the different aspects it and here you can see this is just one example that i have taken up one paper any other branch which is available thank you ji ji han ji for me i'm sorry i don't have a paper from the pharmacy branch but uh, i have only mechanical engineering anybody from mechanic mechanical da bhi nahi lag raha hai shayad koi uh, mechanical engineering da kon hai hey, faculty yes ma'am okay so here friends there is a elements of mechanical engineering you see here and paper btech again mechanical but first second is common okay so 3 hour section instruction de vich koi galti apa karde ha oh sare ch common hai hai section a now here the first question is explain thermodynamic system two marks next question is wrong what is zero zeroth law of thermo zero zeroth law of a eh, hun th ithe aana chahida si ya upar jana chahida si hum zeroth law hai han ji zero ha जीरोस्ट देखो दो मार्क्स ही चेक अगेन दिस इज ओरल क्वेश्चन वन शुड हैव सेड एक्सप्लेन द क्लोज्ड द कांसेप्ट ऑफ क्लोज्ड सिस्टम क्लोज्ड सिस्टम द कांसेप्ट ही एक्सप्लेन करना बस देन व्हाट इज आइसोबेरिक प्रोसेस हुन आइसोबेरिक प्रोसेस अगेन एक्सप्लेन आना चाहिए था व्हाट तो नहीं शुरू होना चाहिए था नेक्स्ट इज व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय एयर स्टैंडर्ड साइकल्स again what galat hai one should write write the meaning of air standard cycles or simply say define air standard cycle then define mean effective pressure okay 
next again should have been either define elastic limit then what is the use of old dance coupling use so state two uses of old dance coupling that should have been the question go to part b marks 8 differentiate between reversible and irreversible processes fine define enthalpy why does the enthalpy of an ideal gas depends only on temperature now here you see define enthalpy full stop there should have been a full stop then the second question should be explain why as to why or explain why does enthalpy of an ideal gas depends only on temperature there should have been full stop and the thing which is written is discuss it a fir galt ho gaya ethe hona chahiye si enthalpy of an ideal gas depends only on temperature do you agree or do you disagree give reason give reasons that should have been the way of writing the question then question number 4 1 kg of air at 3.5 bar and occupying 0.35 meters cube is heated at constant volume until its temperature has risen risen the spelling galat hai r i s i n ethe aaya hoya r e s i n to 316 degrees in, uh, c find initial temperature of air final pressure of air heat added gain in internal energy now here you see this question is 8 marks so whether two marks are to be given for each part that is not clear if there is lengthy procedure for one more marks can be allocated to that one if they are of equal then two two marks can be given to them. then next question you see what is uh, carnot cycle again this is wrong define or explain then what are the four processes which constitutes the cycle agge ki likhe explain to siddha hi kyon nahi apan likh dende explain the four processes which constitutes the बिगिनिंग During the heat addition process, the pressure is tripled. Calculate the internal efficiency of the cycle and the efficiency of Carnot engine operating between the same overall temperature limits. So distribution of marks again is missing in this case. Then explain longitudinal strain, Poisson ratio, yield point, and bulk modulus. Explain. so when you say explain the concept of these four things comma pehle which full stop it should have been comma oh galti hai choti ji baki jab char hai so 4 into 2 would have been the distribution of marks for each explanation you get two marks then compare the auto diesel with the dual cycle that's okay uh right notes on now this is a question which needs to be avoided by each one of us when you say right notes on that means you are giving complete flexibility to the student whatever you know you please write jo aanda hai wo likh do which is not correct and this kind of a question should be avoided because the purpose of evaluation is that you want to compare performances so if you give such flexibility you will not be able to do justice to your evaluation so write short notes at this type of question need to be avoided or when as a paper setter i don't find any question uh, then i say okay write short notes so mera kaam khatam hoya mera question paper taiyar ho gaya that should not be the 
approach while setting a question paper. So friends, I have simply given you uh, that at present, the way we are setting our question paper, they have many, I would say, mistakes. I had analyzed almost for this presentation, which I have been making in these programs, uh, about 30, 35 papers I have tried to analyze of Haryana State Board of Technical Education, Rajasthan Technical Board, and then for the degree level, Rajasthan Technical University, then Punjab Technical University, then Delhi Board. So I find that not intentionally we are doing this, but unintentionally we are making certain mistakes in setting the question paper. So carefully we need to examine the procedure which we are adopting and we need to improve upon the quality of our question paper by framing right kind of question by ensuring that proper marking scheme is given to the uh, person who is going to examine the answer scripts and along with the clarity of instruction and the general information on the top of the paper should be there because uh, if there is complete general information sometimes it happens in the universities that the wrong paper is opened up or wrong paper is distributed. So if discipline is there, subject code is there, outside of the envelope on the paper, some errors can be avoided. And here you will see that marking scheme that has to be again given by the paper setter. And he can give instructions to evaluators and he can properly allocate marks to various questions and if there is more than one part then proper distribution of marks to the part can be ensured then if this is done to facilitate the process of objective marking the paper setters should also give the model answer now why I am saying so Maybe you don't write completely the answer to be given, but the main points to be covered in the answer. If an, a paper setter does that, he ensures objectivity in checking off uh, answer sheets and uh, the kind of re-evaluation procedures which are being adopted, they can be minimized. Uh, I would say that one of the instances we came across that one person has assigned zero. The second examiner has assigned 60 marks on the same answer sheet. Now see the variation which has been there. Zero and 60. In another case we came across in case of a numerical a person has given zero, another person has given 16 or 17 marks. Such large discrepancy existed. It happened because one examiner looked at the final result of the numerical and said the person could not come out with the right answer. Another person made step-by-step -step marking on the uh, numerical. For each correct step, he gave marks. And the student could score 70, but another one gave zero looking at the final result of that numerical. So such kind of discrepancies can be avoided if the papers are set uh, by giving due consideration to the components which are there in the paper and ensuring appropriate framing of questions, instructions, marking schemes, or allocation of marks to the various parts in the question. So friends, I stop here. If you have any question, you are welcome. And, uh, how much emphasis should be given on unimportant topics or topics that are generally not covered in uh, earlier uh, papers? Yes. How much emphasis should be given by setting up the paper on unimportant topics or the topics that carry lesser marks in syllabi? Uh, I would say, don't say that they are unimportant. Anything which is included in the syllabus 
is likely to be important from the uh, subject point of view so you need to give look to the time which has been given to the topic for teaching from there you derive the weightage then apply your mind that whether this knowledge is going to be utilized in the build up work and what is the importance of this topic in the in today's context and today's organizations or today's build up work then 2 to 3 uh, percentage can be modified you can either increase or decrease just on my whims and fancy that this uh, subject or this topic is not relevant i cannot say that this topic be not included in the question paper once you make your students learn that then it should find place in your question paper it should find place in your question paper otherwise review your syllabus and those unimportant aspects or irrelevant aspects they can be eliminated from your syllabus okay that's why we say that curriculum revision should be a continuous process and every 2 to 3 years the curriculum should be revised so that we have something which is relevant in the curriculum okay is it okay ma'am yes ma'am okay any other question i think this when you are uh, analyzing a practical paper how much of an emphasis should be given to length of the answer uh <laughs> no one minute uh, here when you say length of length is not a consideration for giving marks marks are to be allocated on the basis of relevance appropriateness of the answer and that's why we always emphasize that if a paper setter gives the points to be covered in the answer that becomes the guideline for the examiner to compare the answer with those uh, what is expected of the student secondly when there are parts i had said if you have given marks four marks four marks then you can if you as a examiner or the paper setter write an answer and see how much can be written within 3 hours for the various questions that becomes the yardstick for uh, that but otherwise length is not a consideration length is not a consideration you need to look into the appropriateness of the response and adequacy of response i mean to say when you are uh, attempting a two two mark question then what should be the appropriate length no two mark question uh, wo aapki framing pe depend karega tabhi main bol rahi thi jab aap likh dete ho what is uh, ic engine अब जितना मर्जी लिखते जाओ आईसी इंजन पे बट वॉट इज तो पहले ही गलत हो गया तो मैंने जब दो मार्क्स का क्वेश्चन है इसका मतलब है इधर आई एम टेस्टिंग अबिलिटी टू मेमोराइज और अबिलिटी टू अंडरस्टैंड इससे ऊपर मैं जा ही नहीं सकती सो द क्वेश्चन हैव टू स्टार्ट विद इधर डिफाइन आईसी इंजन और आई से एनलिस्ट एनी एट पार्ट ऑफ आईसी इंजन और आई से state any two uh, applications of ic engine or i say state the working principle of ic engine to meri jo question frame karungi na wohi aisa hona chahiye ki that should provide the length of the answer to the student state karna to kitna do, do lines mein aa jayega working principle agar mujhe aat naam hi likhne hai to aap soch sakte ho aat words would be there when i have to write the parts of the ic engine और अगर मुझे आईसी इंजन का डिफाइन करना है अगेन डेफिनेशन वुड बी टू टू थ्री लाइंस तो ऑटोमेटिकली द रिस्पॉन्स लेंथ इज डी लिमिटेड और अगर आप सोचते हो कि जैसे आपने आठ नंबर का क्वेश्चन था आपने लिख दिया कंपेयर है ना कंपेयर अभी आप इफ आई रिकॉल आई हैड शोन यू किसी ने ये क्वेश्चन डाला हुआ था कि दो चीजों में कंपेरिजन करना था कंप्यूटर साइंस का पेपर था आई थिंक दैट वाज कंप्यूटर साइंस पेपर अगर आप कंपैरिजन कहते हो तो उसको हम कैसे रिस्ट्रिक्ट कर सकते हैं आई कैन से राइट एनी फोर सिमिलैरिटीज एंड डिसिमिलैरिटीज बिटवीन दीज टू थिंग्स तो अगर मैंने चार चार कर दी अगेन 
आई एम रिस्ट्रिक्टिंग द आंसर ऑफ माई स्टूडेंट और जैसे मैंने कहा कि आपने एप्लीकेशन है उसका नंबर लिख दिया राइट और एक्सप्लेन एनी टू एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस इन इंडस्ट्री तो आपने दो लिख दी तो दैट इट सेल्फ रिस्ट्रिक्ट लेंथ ऑफ द आंसर तो आपको जब आप लिखते हो क्वेश्चन सी हाउ यू कैन मेक इट मोर रिस्ट्रिक्टेड दैट इट गिव्स अ क्लू टू द स्टूडेंट इतना ही लिखना है उससे आगे नहीं जाना ठीक है हाँ जी एनी एनीथिंग एल्स यू वुड लाइक टू क्लैरिफाई ठीक है जी ओके जी थैंक यू सो मच तो देन वी मीट अगेन एट टू ओ क्लॉक फॉर द पैनल डिस्कशन एंड आई एम वेरी श्योर दैट पर्सन फ्रॉम इंडस्ट्री दे हैव बीन इनवाइटेड टू योर कॉलेज एनी आइडिया the local coordinator yeah. local coordinator is there and dr bahar yes sir yeah. we have invited two people ma'am uh, one is nahi nahi kisi i would request please assign this duty of introducing the uh, persons to one of your faculty members so that when we start the session the two industry experts can be introduced ठीक है जी थैंक यू सो मच सर देन सी यू एट टू क्लॉक थैंक यू थैंक यू नहीं हमें तो नहीं मैंने लगता है